Hey everyone, it's Melanie and, and Anthony with Ford on Fifth Cigars and today we're going to get real with you. So stay tuned and we'll talk to you soon after we, what are we doing? Lighting up, but I'm ready. We are going to That's stupid. guys we're back and today we're going to talk about how Anthony and I acquired Ford on Fifth cigars so originally it was called Ford and Hague and it was a cigar shop that has been around in Old Town Scottsdale for oh gosh since 1958 or 56 it's been in that part of town since the late 50s we know that much yes so it kind of all started out, Anthony and I had been repping and we were just kind of getting tired of the grind. Um, I was getting a lot of, I don't know if we should go into this, but I was getting a lot of crap um, uh, for helping other cigar shops, working part time at one and also repping and um, Anthony was just getting kind of worn out there were some people who spread some false rumors about us and um, just really hurt. Yeah, uh, you know, I think a lot of the joy of what we were doing um, was starting to go out of it. Uh, we love the industry. And I think one of the things that we always were both pretty strong on was that if that started to fade and, you know, it became more of a heartbreak, you know, than it was, away. we would look at what was next for us. And we were, we were worn out. I mean, yeah. I, you know, we had been doing it for a while and I, I was getting a lot of shit and I was done with it. Yeah. You were done with it. I needed I, a break. I still, I still liked what I did a lot, but at the same time, the life balance wasn't there for our family. And not only were we gone away, working, I was completely emotionally not available. And I think now going from going through what I went through, I know how to go through it better. But at the time I wasn't able to. Yeah, well I think what was really interesting at the time too is that in the in the industry there are there are definitely some strong females out there who have done great things, who have been part of the industry for a long time. Mm -hmm. But their personalities are really different. I mean, they're almost, and I'm not saying this in a bad way, but they're, they have the almost more of a dude mentality, being one of the guys, and they're able to embrace that. I mean, they're feminine for sure, mm -hmm. but- They're an alpha female. They're an alpha, and that's just how they roll. Because in this industry, especially as a female, you gotta have some of those qualities to you to make it, especially when you're on your own. Now, Mel's unique because we had each other and not as many people starting off on that side had that. And your personality's never been an alpha female. No, I've uh, always been a follower, a caretaker, a uh, encourager, I, and uh, I've always had a community in a sense. And I think this was the first time that I really felt alone and I think we'll do another video about that because I I think the bullying and the treatment that I endured is important to talk about but what it opened when we had this opportunity it looked so good yeah. we couldn't say no and I struggled with it but I was like I'm so done repping I couldn't see people anymore I wanted to be in a safe place um, especially after what I had been through and you kind of going through what we had been through together, um, we wanted to be in a safe place. You were straight up cyber bullied. I mean, I, 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 and I don't want to mince words and like I said, you know, there's definitely another time and place where we can have this discussion. Um, cyber people, bullied and sexually harassed, but we will go into that another time. I mean, it was probably the worst season in my entire life. And sexually assaulted in some occasions. That's what I was Which is saying. even worse and um, And people kind of made it like, they could do that to me because of the rumors that people created about me, which weren't entirely true. But regardless of that, we saw an opportunity. Uh, Ford and Haig was going to go out of business. And for us, a really big thing with the cigar community was 
that I fell in love with when I saw Anthony getting into cigars was the community. And community is so big for us. Uh, church community, family community, my mom's community. That is so big for us. And when you struggle from things, a lot of times you retreat from community. So I knew for us, we wanted to save this community of Ford and Hague. It was a big deal for both of us, but we never had the financial means to do so. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that was that was the thing. You go back long enough into my history, um, when I was in the industry just starting out, I always had hoop dreams early on of doing my own store. A lot of guys get that. They spend time in the community, you know, they see a shop environment, and they're like, oh, this is cool. Some guys think it's really easy, and, you know, sometimes it is, sometimes it's not. We knew it would never be easy. We kind of just thought it would be like a retirement thing. Yeah, we always thought maybe down the line it would be nice to have our own little piece of something. Um, and we just never thought that day was going to come, but Ford and Hague came along and first of all, for me, aesthetically, it was one of those shops that just had that rich history to it. Like a Jack Schwartz. Yeah. That I just loved. I mean, there, it was so cool that the oldest shop in town, you know, could possibly be ours, mm -hmm. you know, and there's, there's such a rich legacy of individuals who had been in and out of those doors throughout time. You know, there had been some great shop owners and there had been, you know, like the last one, he wasn't fantastic and that's why it kind of ran out of business. By the time we took it over, it had been really run into the ground. But we saw a real diamond in the rough there. We saw an opportunity. Um, but like Mel saying, like, we didn't have the money saved up. I mean, we were just kind of surviving four kids. We were barely making it. Yeah, four kids. We were barely making it. We were doing decent numbers in our brokerage, but that provided us to live and not and, really save up. Or, and we were, know. I wasn't really at a point to go back to social work because I had never finished my master's. So uh, besides that, um, an opportunity kind of presented itself for two of our really good friends who always wanted to own a shop and kind of went up and said, well, Anthony can work full time. Yep. He will have a really small percentage of the shop and um, I at that time kind of found another job and needed the oh You needed a little time away from the industry. I did need some time away. It was really good yeah. for me. Now, we started off um, the shop, like Mel said, I was sweat equity into the piece and I wasn't investing any physical capital at the time. Down the road there was talks of me investing a small amount. Um, to give myself a little more percentage, but the goal was that I'd run it the day-to-day -day operations, be kind of the face of it, and you know, just go on, which was cool. Like I was excited about that. Um, it seemed like a solid opportunity, and like I said, you know, we had at the time two very good friends who stepped in and did it um, that had the financial elements to kind of put it together. So we started down the path and. Quickly. And quickly, just like some partnerships do, it kind of unraveled. Um, and it was like probably the worst unraveling that you could ever imagine. Yeah, it got real ugly real quick. Um, Not with our one partner. Yeah, one of our partners was awesome. But he's also kind of a risk assessment guy by day. And so he could see the writing on the wall. And so he stepped back pretty quick and pulled himself out of the company. I remember even like, it's so strong in my mind, the day we were standing there in the shop and I don't think I've cried that hard, like really, well, until recently, but in front of anyone. But when he said he was walking away and I was like, we, need, we cannot be a part of the shop without him. I said, if he leaves, we have to leave. And I knew 100% in my mind that we had to walk away at that moment. It was super tough because she was really upset as a husband. I wanted to respect what she was saying and feeling. But at the same time, I also knew financially and positionally, we had shut down the brokerage for the most part. We had kept a couple things on. We had really shut down a lot of the operation. And the job I was working at, I was making like eight bucks an hour. So it wasn't like yeah. I went to anything special. I literally just went to another job just to get away. Yeah, and it left us in a place where we were like, we couldn't walk away. 
we had to fight it out and we had to go forward. Now, the reason why the first partner stepped out was because the second partner, to some degree, kind of overestimated what he could really bring to the table. And once again, you know, he was a, he was a younger guy, he was a dear friend, and you know, unfortunately, his funds were coming from a parental source on some levels. And we didn't know about it. And we didn't know about that angle, but a lot of that voice started to creep in and it started to cause some real issues in the company. And, and it also, he also brought in, uh, without us knowing. Yeah, so without our permission or our consent, he brought in another party to essentially become a partner in the business. And the guy came in and it was a complete train wreck. Within like a couple of days, he had alienated customers. People hated the dude. I was, it was embarrassing. Yeah, it was bad. And I said, look, we've got really two options here. One, you know, and he lived in a different place, so he wasn't nearby, so it's not like he could be here all the time. So I'm like, either you make a decision that you want this and you come down and do this and it's yours, or we work out a way where you exit and sell this off to me. Scared the crap out of Bill and I because we didn't have we didn't have money. We didn't have the money to do it. Um, or credit. Needless to say, we weren't in a credit position, a strong credit position. We, we didn't had have no a, savings. We had no savings. Um, it was depressing. But So we had a family member um, who had been into the shop, who had seen kind of what we we're doing, that believed in it enough um, to give us some resource funding on it. Uh, it wasn't, once again, it wasn't a ton. It basically allowed us to buy our partner out. And that allowed us to take the rest of that initial investment, which was like, I think, 10000 About $10,000. Um, which we thought was like a lot of money. <laughs> we're like, sweet. We're so we'll rich. We'll make this go far. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, I think our first Padron order was like around 4000 So that was like... Now you really have to have like a 6000 Padron order. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We've so. <laughs> so anyway, we started with very little. And... We made it work, um, but it was tough. I mean, paying out and buying out a partner and all those things, like there was a lot, we had investments in the space throughout the year as well. Um, as far as kind of, you know, putting more furniture in, we put it in an air filtration system in there. Our air conditioning went out. Our air conditioning went out. Um, yeah, we had we to We really move. had to learn it. It's interesting, nobody ever says the journey, you know, when you have to run and manage people and learn, like, have to tell people and have those, like, confront times when you have to confront people, which, oh, is the worst. And uh, con working on the boundaries with customers, which you think you're like, oh, we're going to create this space and a community and it's going to be amazing. And then you have to learn boundaries. It's like you love people. It's like with your kids, you love these people. And you, but you realize like, wow, people really walk all over us, <laughs> like, not on purpose. Yeah. It's because we don't have boundaries. So you learn these things, which the vast amount of skills, like I took a ton of business classes because it actually lined up with my psychology degree. And I'm sure you did some too, but you don't learn those skills until you're out in the field managing a business, you know? Yeah. And uh, you know, I think, you know, I've spent a lot of time too throughout the years. Um, since we had our own brokerage and these different things running our own business and learning, you know, like the first time we ever did our corporate taxes for our brokerage, like that was a crazy experience and a frightening one. And, you know, it was definitely a scary thing being all of a sudden an owner, full owner of your own company um, was also, I mean, we, we had been owners of our own brokerage, but once again, now we own a shop, we have employees. Um, you know, we have <laughs> payroll, we have people um, yelling at you like your prices are wrong and you're like, Really? We thought we added and did the math right and like yeah, you're screaming at us and our prices got, are out of contract and you're gonna cancel our account and you're like, What the heck? <laughs> like yeah. I swear we did it right, you know. And then you have customers yelling at you like I could go to all these stores that have cheaper cigars and you're like, I have just no idea. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's, uh, you love people, but you also, in retail operations, have a healthy hatred towards them at some points, too. Um, and once again, that's just because everybody's got personalities. Everybody has an opinion, and you, 
once again, Mel and I are both probably more people pleasing than we should be. So for us, it was a whole lot of, we wanted to fulfill the desires of all these customers mm -hmm. and a lot of them were generally great ideas. And a, like a silly one. And I, I know these are silly things because like people who own a business will probably be watching this and be like, Serial, you guys, really? But also maybe somebody who is thinking of starting up a business, maybe you can learn from our mistakes. But I remember one that was like, Anthony and I were like talking about it. Like, what do we do? You know, like the soda issue. And everybody wanted free soda, and it was like a big deal for us. We're like, yeah, everyone can be at, well, on their honor. They're going to get their soda. Like, this is a big deal. And I'm like, honey, we're paying like thousands. Uh, I was going to Costco, making Costco runs, and spending a lot of money on like chips and soda. And people aren't, they're not doing the honor roll. Like, they're not honoring the free soda, you know? Like, yeah, we're investing. I mean, legitimately, we're investing like $700 in snacks, sodas, water, and all that. Per and trip. Yeah, per trip. So that could be like two to three times a month. Yeah, and we would get maybe... 10 oh. bucks in the soda jar. Yeah, and it's got a lot better. We've, we've changed that system around completely. Yeah, but um, it was like, we felt like such a bad guy when I was like, no more soda. Kylie's like, no more soda. Just going through your first year of business and you know, you learn things like, wow, Something as silly as soda, but we save so much money by just being like, nope, we will spend the amount of money that's in the jar, get that soda, and if it's not in the jar, there's no soda. Yeah. It's and silly. It's, yeah. <laughs> but you feel, like when you're a people pleaser, you feel guilty. And now when you learn, like, wow, it wasn't that big of a deal as we thought it would be, you move on. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So, to make this thing not one big meandering thing yes. the, the reason why we're doing this video too is because lately we've had a lot of questions over really like the last month and a half mm -hmm. i think the craziest problem that we've had like our biggest problem this year in the first year of business was not the problem i ever thought it would be my first i thought all right here's where the shop did numbers before we had about five years worth of data um on the shop uh we knew kind of the high points and low points where it was so we're like all right we're gonna take their best year and we're gonna aim for that. And that was a healthy number. It would cover everything kind of as we had planned it out. So we aimed for that number. The crazy part is, is not only did we beat that number, but we grew substantially over that number. And so our biggest problem wasn't that we couldn't generate sales, is that we were generating so much. So many, too many sales. Too, yeah, it really became an issue of not too many sales. Um, yeah, it, that was our biggest problem is that the demand was higher than what we could bring in. And we were trying to run when we should have been walking to keep up with it. So all of it caught up with us. Really the trade show is kind of where we went, I'd say sideways on it. We, uh, you know, I, I do so much leg work like as a rep, as a retail guy, you know, I've been to the show on both sides. I'm like, I got this. So we really thought going to the trade show we got this on lock. Now, the thing that we didn't think about going to the trade show that none of us thought about, which is funny, is like, there's a new product at the show. And we don't know those prices really until we get there. We don't know the deals really until about a week or two beforehand. And so we get there and we're able to knock out all the stuff we have to order, no problems. And all that made sense. And we had figured our budget around that. But then it's like, oh, there's this new product. And we know our customers really like that. We did a bunch of new stuff from a bunch of new places and all that stuff was great when we got it in but the problem was is that it really exceeded where we had put our budgetary benchmarks and for the rest of the year that's where we were running when we should have been walking because we were getting wave after wave of new product we were selling it all which was great but it was really more than we could handle and we were flexing and taking on these small business loans to essentially cover it all. And those are great, but those business loans get paid back quickly. They're, let's just say we're selling $40,000 in you know, stuff a month. We'd, have to, we'd like to at least have 20,000 um, or close to 20,000 in buying back ability to generate that again and to continue to grow it and spur it, spur it into other deals. Um, but we did it. We you know, handicapped ourselves. 
And so by the time Christmas rolled around, we had a great holiday season, but January hits and our shelves were like empty. Empty. I mean, we, we had sold through everything. And I told Anthony, I said, do not order anything unless it was necessary. Like, put that off. We're not going to get that. We're not going to get that. And it was so hard. And I'm black and white. I was like, we can't. We can't. We can't get that. We can't. Just say no. Just say no. I don't care who it is. Say no. When you have a shop, you have to keep almost like the, the size of our humidor. We almost need $100,000 worth of cigars on our shelves, which we never started out with. Yeah. I mean, we certainly got up to there throughout the year, and then, you know, we sold through it, and, you know, there's there's points in the year where our shelves were not only full, but we had overstock to some degree, somewhat full. We were selling so much, and we still but, uh, are selling a crazy amount for what we have. I mean, it's insane. It, and, the, it's huge. Yeah, and we've really cut back on the internet. Like, we've done all those I've things. I've really cut back the internet because I want to focus on the store. So all I have to say is that we love our customers because you guys, you know, have done a great job in really supporting, supporting us. us and getting us to have the ability to continue to run the shop on a day to day basis. But the biggest heartbreak, I think, or the biggest thing that made us feel like failures over the last month and a half to two months, really, I guess, is that, you know, we've had we've got behind on certain elements or we weren't able to bring in product fast enough. And people constantly ask us, like, are you going out of business? because we don't have a ton on our shelves. And so this is one of those things, like, you know, for our enemies out there, they're probably laughing and saying, hey, we're gonna go out of business. And this is, a, you know, for us, it's a sucky video to have to admit that we were in a struggle point. You know, for all of our fans out there, you know, that we let down because we didn't have what they wanted on our shelves, that was also a sucky point because that really allowed for us, to, we felt bad. We wanted you guys to have the cigars you want, but we couldn't get them to you um, fast enough. But the plus side is, is that we wanted to put out there, you know, when people say, are you going out of business or, you know, are you going to get more cigars back? The question is, no, we're not going out of business. And yes, we're getting cigars back. And I think that's the silver lining, but it's a real honest approach tonight. It's, it's hard for us to sit here and go, we didn't do everything right. We made mistakes. And because of that, we've had to really crawl almost instead of even walking right now. To get back to the point where we can walk and hopefully get back to the point where we can run again um, but right now it's been this really slow intentional pay off what we owe bring in what we can rebuilding period and it's it's, it's a good lesson for us yeah because um when we want to live intentionally we and I actually really love bringing someone to my humidor and teaching them about new cigars and something like, if you like this cigar, what can I get you on that you'll really like? I finally had to tell myself, we don't have to compete with somebody who's been in business 10 to 12 years. We don't have to compete with somebody who started out with a million dollar budget because we started out with no budget. We started out with no money. and. That's crazy to me. We were in a position where we walked into a shop with no money and turned it into something and did more sales than that shop has ever done. And with hardly any cigars, we turned it. So when people walk in and are like, where's your cigars? Well, they say that because if we had just one wall of cigars, our cigars would look full, but our humidor is freaking huge which makes it look empty, which sucks. Yeah, yeah, you know, I think the takeaway of this video, you know, there's a couple of things to take away from mm -hmm. it, right? First of all, rest assured, we're doing everything we can to get you your selection back as quickly as we can. But beyond that, we're really proud of what we accomplished. And it wasn't just about what Mel and I accomplished, it's about what our regulars accomplished mm -hmm. by being the great regulars that they are in the shop. Our it's family, about that, our, our family. Like that family member that really just sacrificed to help us. Yeah, and dug deep. Um, I mean, you know, some of the sacrificial employee, you know, help that we've had has mm -hmm. been beyond. Our customers would like stay overnight when we had to remodel the shop. They just did it for free. Yeah, they did the labor. I mean, all of our stuff that we had to pay for, it was expensive because we had to pay for the materials. Mm -hmm. But they did the work. Our and they customers did the work. Didn't for ask free. for anything. And yeah. 
you know, it's just really neat. Yeah, our shop, I think, is a labor of love. It is a labor of love, and it is a shop that was born out of a community. I mean, it's truly a community that's built and maintained that shop. Mm -hmm. And I think for that, we are super thankful, we're super proud, and we're super honored and humbled by it. Mm -hmm. um, so this video is not, it's a sucky video to have to be like, well crap, we don't have these themes right now. You know, and we made mistakes along the way that created some of these situations. Some of it was out of sight of our control. Some of it was inside of our control. I mean, just out of na na nativity. Being well, yeah, naive I mean, and learning and learning to budget better. and. Yeah, I mean, I think one of the things that we've done the last few months especially well is we have looked through and made some hard decisions and hard cuts on things. And we still have some more things that we got to do on that. But we've been able to save ourselves a ton of money. And I think it's yeah. embarrassing sometimes for us where we're like, oh, People are like, yeah, we want to come to your shop and want to hang out. And I'm like, oh, maybe next week, you know, because I think maybe we'll get another round of more product. And we do. We always get rounds of more product, but it's like it sells out so fast. And yeah. I just want people to think like they walk in and it's just filled, like plenished, plenished like just filled with tons of stuff. It's a cornucopia of cigars. Just every Filled to the rafter. Yeah, you're kind of like, Wah. And I'm like, but look at this. But <laughs> like what Mel said. We do have some great cigars, and we have, we've always been adamant in keeping counterpoint. So even though we can't have something that we know someone might want, we try to always have something, you know, in every shipment that's coming in that fulfills our weaknesses. You know, the thing that people always say is like, if you survive your first year of business, then you've got it made. And I'm like, well, I think if we survive our second year, that's almost more the benchmark. Like our first year was great, but it's surviving the second year right now because we did some things that are causing us to have to walk and we'll crawl and walk back. So we're, we'll get there. I'm confident we'll get there. But um, it's a journey. And I think that's why like, I like watching guys like Gary Banerchek sometimes who are like, you gotta eat a lot of shit and not you know take anything and grind and hustle, blah, 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 blah. And it's a lot of he that. He says it with like so much ease. Sometimes I'm like, Gary, do you really know? Gary, tell me like how much shit to eat because when this, that guy walks in, he's like such an ass to me, and I just like, I smile and I'm like, yeah, just, why do you have to be an ass, you know? <laughs> anyway. But I think this video should also be encouragement to small business guys, guys who have a dream, who have a passion, to want to do something. Put a ton of money into it and yeah. sweat and lived off mac and cheese. Yeah, yeah, we have not lived glamorously this last year, even more though we produced years. more money than we probably have ever produced in our life at any one given point in time. But it's Paying just because we put it all back into the shop and into our resources to and pay people. the people back. Yeah, so. Fast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's almost like we're really just owning it now. Yeah, so we're, you know, there is a lot of truth to that. There's a lot of grind before the success. So when I see that picture of the iceberg all the time, like on those little motivational channels and things that, you know, I check out every once in a while, like here's the success iceberg and underneath there's all these different things and we're living all these different things. And, you know, hopefully one day we see, um, the top, see that top of the iceberg and it looks so simple, but that's the thing. Like there's a lot of those under the element themes it takes to build that. So, you know, don't ever give up on the journey. Um, you know, I think that's one of the things that's, you know, been great about our journey together is that Mel and I have gone through a lot of interesting challenges and a lot of like bad luck scenarios that have happened to us throughout our time together as a couple. But I think all those things have taught us one thing and that's not to, not to give up. And so we press forward, we press on, and we grind at it um, so that we can you know, continue to provide something for the community that we're super passionate about. And that's great cigars and a great community to come enjoy those cigars in. Mm. Our perspective, I think that's why this video is important. Uh, it's important, first of all, so we don't have to hear every two seconds from everybody, are you going to get more cigars in or are you going out of business? No, no, and no. Well, yes, we'll get more cigars in. No to the going out of business part. We don't have any plans to go anywhere. 
We've had great people along the way that have helped us out as far as providing their time and support. And we want to thank, this is our love letter to you guys because you guys have really, really blessed our hearts. And also just, you know, a time for us to say like, you know, cigar shop, like when we're out here being goofy and making these videos and making it look like it's fun and easy, it's fun to be in it, but it's a lot of work that goes behind it. With the journey we've had and the resources we've had, I don't think I would change what we decided to do, which was to take a step out in faith that this was the right thing for us to do for our family yeah. and for the community. And I think we can be proud of that. You know, whether we ultimately succeed or fail, I think we did something right for at least a period of our lives that we can be proud of. And just realize that small business is a labor of love, like raising a child or anything else. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of joy, a lot of sadness, but ultimately it's something I think that we've found has been totally worth it and it's exciting for us. And hopefully it's exciting for you guys to watch what we're doing. Um, hopefully this is something that brings some enjoyment, um, some positivity to what you guys are doing on a daily, so. Mm -hmm. And that's what's important to us. Yeah. So this is Anthony. Melanie. And we'll see you again next time on our YouTube channel for Ford on 5th. Great. Have a great day. Have a great night as well.